This is Coogan Cassius Rifle TV in association with MTK Global. We're at Light to Box Gym here in Red Hill, joined by Adam Booth. Hi. Hi. What's happening? Training. You're not training right now? Lots of training. Resting. Watched quite a bit of your session today. Training session? In, betwi in between your Cuban cigars. Yeah. You do smoke a lot of them, don't you? I'm not an athlete. I get to see. Did you tweet that? No, I tweeted the one where you were singing. Better. All go here, innit? <laughs> it is, innit? You're sounding like, a, like an old woman that should be talking like that. Oh, it's all go here, innit? It is all go here, innit? <laughs> it is, yeah. So you're not... What's the most amount of fighters you've had? You've got nine at the moment, but what's the most amount you've had before? Three. Three? Was that when you had Hay, Groves and... Something like that. And who? Who was the other well, no, I mean, like years ago, there was Gary Logan, David A, Anthony Small, there's other, you know, but it's always kind of been three was my maximum. Mm. And I just lost the plot and decided just to keep saying yes. And you're not stopping here, you're going to take on more fighters, aren't you? There's two more. Mm. But I've got a good team. I've got a really good team for the first time. Um, Got some assistants that have been working with me now for uh, a few years. Richard Towers, Roger Lee, Charlie, Terry, and it works well. Everyone has their own little bit that they take care of, and it means that I can spend more time being a coach and a little bit less time being a trainer. There's a difference between the two, and, and I'm enjoying it. I suppose the biggest, say, surprise, nothing really in boxing surprises anymore. Everyone goes everywhere, don't they? So, um, was the Billy Joe Saunders one? Um, how? He, g he gave me. He called me and had a little chat, and I said to, he asked me if I would, can, you know, if I'd have a meeting with him, and I said that I would speak to Andy first because um, it's important. I like, you know, I have a very good friendship with Andy as well as a working relationship. I knew he wanted to fight again, but it was interesting enough me to consider and he was fully supportive of it straight away so Billy came down with a little session had a chat and seemed to get on very well and understood each other he's a very he's a smart fella very smart fella and a very shrewd fella and a clever fighter um, talked about what we both believed I could help with and that that could make a, a significant enough difference for us to start working together. He's now at the point where he's just trying to tidy up some frustrations with trying to get a big fight, trying to make the meaningful fights. And I know that he's been frustrated and angry about that for a while. So hopefully he can get that nailed down within the next week and then we can start focusing on a couple of dates. So if when you phone Andy, you sense that he wasn't happy, you were just point blank and said no to Billy Joe? Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Proper man, that's why, aren't you? No. Andy and I, Andy and I are, are good friends. It's interesting though, isn't it? Because he beat your fighter, but then he's coming to you to train him. Strange. It's the other way around that the losing fighter would go and work with the winning trainer. Um, and I, you know, I, I respected that about Billy, the fact that he could, he could look past that. We talked about the fight, talked about how we planned to go about the fight and the mistakes that were made. And he talked about how he saw the fight going. And, and, and it was a very interesting chat because all of a sudden you're, having, you're seeing it from both sides. Um, but his career is more than just one fight. And he was confident enough in what he believed and what, or what he thought he knew about me to have a chat with me. Just going to pick this back up. Um, you all right? Silver trainers. Are they silver? Did you spray them? Or you bought them like that? Pick up those bad boys. <laughs> they are quite out there to be honest. And then jeans, I thought they were jeans, they're not. But they're tight, whatever they are. Jeans are tight, isn't that? Um, yeah, 
we have kind of sense from what Billy Joe says, and obviously the fact that he's been inactive last year and had the one fight uh, since winning the world title. But you believe that this year, those fights that he so badly wants, the Golovkins, the Canelo's, he'll get those fights this year. I don't know if I believe it. I hope he, I hope he gets the fights he wants. Um, personally, I think there's big fights for Billy at middle and super middle. Um, but time will tell. Time will tell. Um, just obviously looking around the gym today, there's some people not in today, but uh, you've got all different weights here. Uh, let's go from the very bottom, uh, Charlie Edwards and then Ryan Burnett. Mitchell Smith or Lucian Lucian Reed. Reed Mitchell Smith. Jess Smith. Jess Smith as well, of course. Uh, Josh Kelly's been down. Josh, what weight is he going to start? Don't know yet. Either world or light middle. If he starts. If he starts. Question mark over that. Um, obviously Billy Joe and Lee, and then you got no heavyweight here. Not yet. Oh, bit of news. Maybe. Maybe. Not yet. Because we need you to come out of them big shoes. Well, that would depend on the opponent, doesn't it? No, but big shoes still wear them anyway. And again, I have got the perfect pad man in Richard Towers. Absolutely. What is Richard Towers? So maybe those, uh, those shoes stay retired. <laughs> um, is he not fighting anymore? Richard's coaching now. Coaching. Same. I like Richard. Does that mean you don't like him now that he's coaching? No, I like Richard when he was fighting and you know. Nice fellow Richard. Um so, uh busy stable, busy year. Um you're kind of across two channels as well in uh BT Box Nation, also Sky. So it's all go here. You don't give me anything, are you? Well, I'm, I'm trying to... Do You're making statements. You're not yeah, I make, yeah, but that's what I do. I make a statement and you sort of follow on from it's the right. statement. <laughs> it's by saying, isn't it? Or doesn't it? No, I'm not telling you what to say. It's just like a continuation of uh, of what I was saying. Yes. It's going to be a big year for you. Yeah, interesting. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, like I said, with my... I'll see you tomorrow. I'll text you later. Um, okay. Like I said, because you somehow got to cut this video because of your coughing fit. So I don't know whether you're going to show what I've already said or whether this is saying it for the first time. But I've got a good uh, team of people around me in Richard, uh, Roger Lee, Charlie and Terry. And everyone's got their own little coaching drills and sets that they do, which has allowed me more time to be a coach and less a trainer. And there's a difference between the two. And... And I'm finding it really fulfilling, and I think that it's um, it's going to be an interesting, interesting time. So about Andy Lee, um, he's obviously well one step level inactive from Billy Joe. Really, he's been out of the ring for 13 yeah. months, uh, but he's ready to return this year, and uh, that's good as well. Yeah, he's only 31 as well, Andy, um, and so come back fighting on March the 18th on the undercard of. Triple G and Danny Jacobs at the Garden, and then we'll take it from there. How many fights do you anticipate him having this year? Three, maybe. Get to a level, I suppose. That's what all fighters at I think once the top you're at a twelve-round championship level in your thir in your thirties, maybe you know four four times a year, if you're fighting in ten or twelve rounds, it should be enough. But it, but there's so many variables to that. You know how you, you can fight and it can go one round but the training takes it out of you as well. Um, but we'll see. We'll, we'll take it fight by fight. Did you watch James the girl? Yes. Um, how did you score it, first of all? Uh, I thought... We, you certainly can't complain at a draw. Um, I had the feeling that Badu Jack probably won it by a round, which is effectively a draw, isn't it? Um, so, entertaining. Very entertaining fight. Um, Brampton, Santa Cruz, did you watch that? Yes, yeah. Santa Cruz, um, I think, caught Frampton out with the adjustments that he made in terms of he was using his feet to take the distance away from Carl Moore and using his feints 
to keep Carl sort of mentally busy. Um, so Carl didn't have the success long that he had in the first fight. And then when Carl was up close, I think Santa Cruz's up close game was just a bit tidier. Carl's head movement wasn't there, and so he was getting caught with three or four shots at a time sometimes. Um, but as always, Carl's so strong at that weight, and you know, a grade fighter from from the amateurs as well, and uh, um, um, made it a close fight. But I did have Santa Cruz winning by two or three rounds. Do you want to see a third? Yeah, yeah, I'd like to see a third. This will be interesting because. Because um, Carl would have to make some adjustments. Can't see that fight happening in Belfast, though, can you? It, uh, they're both with Al Heyman, aren't they? It's difficult to see because of US TV time. Have to see what happens. Right. Let's talk about Chris Eubank. Is that all right? When I've spoke to you about Chris Eubank before, you've been kind of reluctant to really talk about what happened in that short relationship you had with Junior and Senior. Um, I did an interview with him over Christmas where he said some things in that interview, which um, I don't know if you've seen or not, to be honest. Have you seen them? All right, so can you, can you just explain... The way Chris Eubank was talking was as though you kind of walked out of that situation with them. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me exactly from your words what actually happened? No, other than that. But that's not it, is it? What What more is there to that story? It was my. I made a decision. I stand by my decision. I have my reasons for it. Um, I know why. Um, I'm understanding that they know why, and that's all. That's all I need to know. You know, they can they can say what they want. It's it to me. It's irrelevant. I make my decisions based on what I believe is right and wrong, and and I stand by all the decisions I made. Chris Eubank says now, Junior. When I was talking to him, he puts the impression out that. He doesn't need um, a trainer, especially on fight night in the corner. He um, said to me the other day that he doesn't think that... He said if he's going to go and win the fight, it's because he's telling himself what to do. It's not really from what a corner would tell him to do or what influence that would have. He didn't say that that wouldn't benefit him, but he said that, you know, that, that what I said at the start of that was what he was suggesting... It's, it's pretty unclear, really, about him and Ro Ronnie Davis, whether Ronnie Davis is training him full-time or whether he generally does train himself, or we don't know. So what, what, what do you make of that? don't make anything of it, really. I don't give it much mind now. I've got plenty on my plate. Um, we are all responsible for ourselves. Um, we have freedom of choice. We live within the law. We, we, we have freedom of choice, and... If that's how he chooses his life to be and how he's boxing, he wants his boxing to career to be, then that's his choice, and 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 he has the perfect opportunity to prove that he's either right or wrong. So it's like anyone, we all we all do things because we believe we're doing it right. No one does something because they think, oh, okay, I'm doing this because I know I'm doing it wrong. It's like your dentist. You go and see if if, if I said to you, you know, a dentist, you say, yeah, I've got a dentist. Go and see him. He's crap. You wouldn't say that. You go to your dentist because you think, all right, he's okay for me. Everyone thinks they're doing it right. Time shows everything. And in time, we will know if our decisions and how we want to do things were right or wrong. Or we can make our decisions based on is our beliefs and our convictions. Was your issue with junior or senior? You, you, what you're doing is you're asking me the same question in a slightly different way. No, no, I'm not. Because I just... I, no, it's not at all. I'm okay. Okay. I'm it, asking it, my issue. My issue was with myself. Okay, no, but I'm saying, was it with? <laughs> it was with myself. It was. I made it. But decision. that wasn't in the choice. I gave you A and B, and you've picked. I C. wasn't training Chris Eubank Senior. I was training Chris Eubank. So there's no issue with you and Chris Eubank Senior. The reason why you're not training Junior is because of the relationship with you and Junior. 
not senior. It's based on a training relationship. So nothing to do with senior. I was there as a coach. I remember that day, the press conference day. I remember seeing you, senior, junior, Ronnie, Eddie Earn. I looked at that while I was filming and I thought, that is a car crash waiting to happen. I just looked at all these characters in this little plot and I thought, how can that possibly work? There's too many, uh, I'm not going to say egos, but there's too many big personalities in there, a clash of personalities in there for this. Or maybe a clash of, clash of opinions and clash of how people think things should be done. But that's it. He's still a good fighter. I was going to say, you, still, you, still, you were I, one of the I first ones that come no, out and said... No, I rate him no different than when I wasn't working with him before. He's still a good fighter. He's a handful for anyone. What did you make of the fight with Reynold Quinlan, the Australian, on ITV pay-per-view as well? What do you make of that? Not a lot. It's not much of a fight, but it's a business. And just like, they, just like they make decisions what to do in the ring, they make decisions what to do outside the ring. And they've made a decision based on a business strategy and where they see the career, uh, the career of Eubank Geo going. So, it's not, I don't think that decision is based on a fight. I think it's based on the business. You know a little bit about the pay-per-view market. Can you? Would you be surprised if it done decent-ish numbers? It depends what you call decent. I suppose we can only really look at it in comparison to Sky Sports box office uh, numbers, really, in this country. How many bars do you think it does? It's a new one, isn't it? Because it's, it's ITV, so you've got, you've got a terrestrial channel promoting it. And you just don't know the power of terrestrial TV advertising until the product has been bought or not bought. Um, just wait and see. People buy things now. People buy anything nowadays, don't they? So I wouldn't be surprised if it did sell well. Um, Seeing this the other day that his son would wreck Andre Ward. He couldn't live with my son. That is what Chris Eubank said. Re what, wreck him in a house? Because <laughs> he was living with him. Wreck him in the ring, I'm assuming him to mean. Check that one, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Thoughts on that one? No, really. Yeah, any thoughts on it? But you, you, you can hypothesise about fights that may will probably never happen. There's no point. It's like you could say, oh, yeah, well, I would have outpointed Willie, Be Willie Pep in a sparring session. I could never prove it because <laughs> it never happened. Or, well, you know, I could out pad work a coach that's not alive anymore. It just. It's irrelevant. It mean anything. Just to confirm, Andre Ward and Chris Eubank are both alive and well. Um, it's not that unrealistic. Okay. I don't see it happening. No, maybe not right now, but it's not completely unrealistic. Did you give Eubank a shot at Golovkin? A chance? Any fighter has a chance in any fight. Not really. Say, if I was to fight you... You'd you have a chance. I was talking about you. You'd have a chance. So <laughs> you dummy. You'd have a good. chance. Yeah, would you? Sorry. The odds would completely be in my favour. I'd have a chance. I could nick it. You could nick it. Um, <laughs> no, but did you give him a, a good chance in that fight or not? You, you, had, you, you kind of... Oh, I'm changing the words. Want, no, you just wanted to interview about Eubank Jr. But. No, but I'm asking you. We're talking. We've got, you know... If... Chris Eubank Jr. for Gennady Golovkin, you're asking me who I think would win that fight? Yes. Gennady Golovkin. Does he give him a, his toughest fight? He gives anyone. He could potentially give anyone a hard night because he carries that much intensity. At this moment in time, I would have to go with Triple G to win that fight. You're consistently private. It's great. All these it's years. It's not. It's not. It's just, I've got other things I'm more interested in talking about. No, I know that. But I, you still haven't really told what happened. But you know, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I, the decisions I make for my existence on this planet and who I want to spend my time with and the fighters that I want to work with 
more importantly, are based on if I have belief in them as a fighter and as a person. If I believe in someone as a fighter and as a young man, then, then I would consider working with them. And equally, my decision not to work with someone is to do with either my lack of belief in them as a fighter or as a person. You, you don't have a lack of belief of him Full as stop. a fighter. End of sentence, new paragraph. I'm just, uh, no, I'm speaking in general. That whoever's here is here because I have belief in them as a, as a fighter individual. Yeah, but you did do some work it's, with it's them. The, it, it, that doesn't mean that it will always stay that way. No. I, don't stay, I don't stay in a situation just for the money. I don't no. stay in a situation just to hang in there because a TV camera might be on it. I do it because I think it's right. If it ain't right, I won't do it. And if it gets to the point where I don't have any fighters, then I'll just go and play tennis. Yeah, you, you have got actually quite decent-ish principles and morals. Decent-ish. <laughs> you have? No, I have. I, you know, all the people in boxing, you do kind of... What are you saying about people in boxing, that they don't have decent principles? Some don't. Who? Well, it's like naming people. Oh, OK, there. so, you, oh, sorry, this is a one-sided... Of course it is. I'm asking it. you the questions. Mouth you, it. You answer. You're not allowed <laughs> technically to ask me questions. But there's scumbags in boxing, you know they are. Scumbags? Absolutely. You've, you've ratcheted it off a notch from not having decent-ish... There are some scumbag, two-faced pricks in boxing. There generally are. But... Are you about fighters, coaches, managers, promoters, broadcasters, pundits? Well, I'm just going to eliminate fighters out of there. Okay. Because I don't know really... I don't know many horrible fighters. And ultimately, they deserve the ultimate respect because they're the ones that are... Totally, yep. totally. So, in the other bracket... Coaches, the... managers, promoters, commentators, journalists... Cutsmen. Cutsmen? Cutsmen. Okay. Cutsmen, yeah. No, he's joking. That, that so, in, that, in, that, that, in the remaining that bracket... That meant the cuts are bastard. <laughs> in that remaining... Definitely not me, I'm sorry. In the remaining... Go on. Go on. In the remaining categories... Yeah, he's in one of them. Go on. Yeah. He's in one of them, did you say? Could Who's be she. He? Could be he or she. So Could be you, they. Are you referring to, you're only referring to one person now? We did this last time, I remember, and I mouthed to who I was talking about. Yeah, but it was... <laughs> yeah, all right. No, but just, you just see it, didn't you? We, we, all we do is we just look, don't comment, and crack on, but we do see it, because we're probably on the boxing circuit more than anyone in British boxing, because we go from everyone to and everyone. This, um, this relationship between you and me that had this awkwardness to it. Mm. Do you want to admit now that that was all contrived? That you and I actually had a conversation about making it that way to see how it would pan out? Yeah. Because I have taken some unfair No, flack. listen, I do. But also, at the same time, I used to think over the years, did he just tell me that because he wants people, me to think that, that there is a problem? Because some people actually convince me that you don't like, like me and stuff. You mean after, so what you're saying is after <laughs> us having a conversation <laughs> yeah. where you say, all right, let's do it where I'll just be really awkward and we'll just have this like really awkward energy between us where I don't like you and you, you ask me and you insult me back. We had that conversation. You then started doing interviews. We did it that way. <laughs> then you started questioning actually, does he mean what he's saying? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, is that he's like... Not a subconscious way, but is it his like <laughs> alternate way of telling me? He doesn't, but do you know what? Loads of people go to me, and I, I've had this probably not more than anyone else, but as much as anyone else. They've gone, oh, that Adam both, mate. I tell you, he don't like you, does he? I went, do you know what? And I tell them the truth. I go, do you know after you see one of these interviews? Do you know that night I'll sit on the phone to Adam for two hours on the phone, and we'll laugh about it. And that surprises them, which is the truth, isn't it? And yet you still doubted whether or not I was being. No, serious. this is at the start. The first time I interviewed you was at Groves de Gal, um, outside Dow Youth. Remember the press conference they had there? Mm -hmm. That was outside there, and it was only a short interview. I thought because I'd only ever seen you in interviews before, and we know how you come across. You, in were, interviews. you were you were just nervous as well, and really uncomfortable two people that made me feel uncomfortable interviewing him one was Carl Froch the first time I interviewed him which I told him about the other day um, 
And the other one, the other one's not actually you. I don't want to actually say who the other one is because I haven't told them. So let me tell them tell first. Tell them now. No, I'll tell them first in an interview. But it wasn't you actually, no. A nice fella. So, so, are we going to keep up this charade or not? I don't know, but I think we've got, we now, I, regardless of the Let's charade. Let's do an awkward interview. Go. Awkward well, you interview. Need to, actually, you need some bloody questions, don't you? I've got questions. Yeah? Tell us the truth, then. Tell us the truth about the split between you and David Hay and you and George no. Groves. I've asked you this countless times. You never answer it. <laughs> so just why? answer it. Ask Because I'm curious. I want, I I want to know. It? I want to know why you stopped training David Hay and why did David Hay stop being, being trained by you and the same goes for George Groves you personally you personally no people want on here want to ah, know there's a of course they right? do okay, but of course I'm, they do I'm, but you just don't want to talk about it because you're Mr Awkward bollocks isn't you that, you don't want to talk about it awkward I just don't have any interest in my decisions being that oh a bit of news oh, a bit of titter I'm not it's interested not in news it. People it is, okay, oh, it's not even news it's it, what you're saying. It's just a bit it, it, of tatter. Yeah, it's old news now, but we still, is. you still don't know. Here we go. You want to know the answer? Yeah. It ain't happening. I've already answered it. I said I make my decisions based on who I want to spend my time with on a couple of things. If they're fighters, it's, do I believe in them as fighters and as people? All right. Immediate reaction to when you found out that Shea McGuigan was training both George and David. It wasn't a surprise to me because I had an email quite a long time ago that was that kind of inferred that type of interest. So it didn't upset you at all? <laughs> Why would it upset me? It must have upset you slightly. Why would it have upset me? I don't know, it just may have done. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> what, what that. <laughs> what? People would just see your head going down. As well. <laughs> he was that. picking that up. Um, it didn't upset you at all? When you say, I, d I don't... Just a slight, hmm. They're over there now. Nah. No. Nah. Groves went with Paddy Fitzpatrick first. I know. And Paddy, Paddy and I worked together for a while. So was that more hurtful? It was a, it was a strange one because of you know, conversations that Paddy and I had. But it is what it is. I, listen, I've made my decisions. I was happy with them then. I'm happy with them now. And I have no interest in telling people why I came to those conclusions. You are very consistent. I will if say somebody, that. If you know, somebody lies about me, then I might say something. But as far as I'm aware... I haven't heard any horrendous lies about why these relationships came to an end, so I've no reason to say anything. Fair enough. I hear some face-saving comments, but that's fine. Don't you? Right. Do you still keep a, a little bit of a active interest in fighters that you've previously trained still today, or you just? Yeah, watch. I, 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 Do you have an I, emotional I, interest? in fighters that you've previously trained? No. Good question. No. I actually asked my question, but... <laughs> you've never complimented one of my questions in your life. Thought. No, it's a good question. Um, no. Is the answer that? Okay. Can I just give you an example? And then you can just tell me. I know you just said no. But say when... The, the, the Fox Grove thing was a bit different because that was very fresh after the split with George. But say by the time he'd lost to Badu Jack, did you feel like, when you watched it, thinking you felt gutted for George in any way? Because of your past relationship? Um, I felt sorry for him in the first fight with Carl because I don't think he had a fair fair shot at seeing the fight through, a fight that he should have won, could have won, was winning. Um, so I felt, sorry for him. I felt sorry for him then, but it's like anything, when you, when you don't spend time with someone, you lose, there's, a, there's an automatic disconnect to them as people, and that's just time. Sorry if I touched any nerves, bruv. <laughs> Um, I get emotional over some fighters. Who'd you get emotional over? I don't want to say on here, but there are there's probably about three or four fighters that I genuinely I want all our boxers in this country. Who are you more emotionally well. invested in? If I shall be really honest. Can I guess? Go on. 
Billy Joe. There you go. That's it. Is it just Billy Joe? It's just Billy Joe. Because I'm friends with Billy Joe, regardless of whether he was boxing or not. So what do you think about Billy Joe coming in and training with you? I, I, I like, that was it. When the first time I spoke to him about it, I thought, that's perfect. That's a, that's a relationship that could potentially be great. So, um, what do you think about Billy Joe as a super middleweight? <laughs> and a light heavyweight at some point in his career. Um, where the fights are. But well, look, if you think about the fights at super middleweight in this country for Billy Joe. James the girl. One. Callum Smith. Two. Um, well, still Chris Eubank. He's floating between Three. two weights. What else have we got? Groves. Groves. Four. Opens up a whole new, new yeah. thing. Yeah. But, to be fair, the only time where, when Billy Joe fought Andy Lee, I, I like Andy Lee. I really, when they fought, I wouldn't have begrudged either of them to winning. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't have been, I, if Andy Lee had beaten Billy Joe, I wouldn't have thought, oh God. Cause How would you have felt if Chris Eubank Jr. had beaten Billy Joe? At the time. Now. Now? If they fought now, if... Billy Joe. If Billy Joe loses it in his career. Listen to me. Yeah. If Billy Joe rematches yeah. Chris Eubank Jr., yeah. how would you feel if Billy Joe were to ever lose that fight? I'd be gutted for Billy Joe. I'm going to be honest. I would be gutted for Billy Joe because... You wouldn't be able to be impartial in the build. I have to be. Listen, in a build... No, you, you can... In, in the face of it, you yeah. can be impartial, but inside... Inside, I'd be, be crushed. You'd be burning. I'd be crushed. <laughs> Would you be sneezing on your hand when you shook their hand and stuff like that just to see if you could have... <laughs> no, to be honest, but that's, I don't know, Look, there's, all, there's people like that. But yeah, Billy Joe, I'd say, I know me and Billy Joe have a... He hates you. Moments. I know he don't like me. I know the, the feeling ain't mutual, definitely not, but... You look crestfallen. I'm only joking, that was a joke. He I think he likes you. Did he say that, really? <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can style it out all you want, but your face dropped. Uh, Billy Joe's my hero. Yeah, Billy Joe. Um, oh, you've got me thinking now. <laughs> I wish they could see me. <laughs> uh, do you know what? Speaking to Chris Eubank over the last three or four weeks... He's what I thought he was. You fitted a, you fitted a fixing in the ceiling of your house and slipped a rope through it. No, he's what I thought he was. I always thought senior it, or junior. Senior. Uh, no, no, sorry, junior. First, I'm talking oh, okay. about. You didn't say junior. Sorry, junior is what I thought Chris was going to be like. That I always thought that we had our issues and problems, but if they were not there and they weren't, you know, they were always going to get resolved at some point. But Chris is someone that I could. I never used to... You know, some people don't like fighters. They'll say they're shit. They'll say they're not good because they don't like them. They won't be that... They won't take the blinkers off and go, look, I don't really like him, but he's a very good fighter. You don't... Not all people do that. But I never did that with Chris. And I didn't really know Chris, so I don't, didn't like him. But he's good as gold. He's been great with us the last few weeks. And... uh He's got a job to do. He's got to be professional. Yeah. He's got a job to do, a fight to sell, a business to develop. And you have reached the lofty status now where you're, you are relevant for fighters because you reach a very strong audience. And, and for fighters, managers or promoters to not want to work with you stops them promoting themselves down a very strong arm. So it's, it's, a, it's a shrewd move of his to be gracious towards you. And, and, and stopped. You were saying something really interesting. Then. The last two seconds of what you were saying stopped. Why did it stop? Because I'm literally running out of card. Okay. Um, Can I get to see this before you do? Is that, is it no. It's a mess. It's, it's a not mess. a mess. It's not a mess at all. Right, listen. We literally are running out of card. Um, Adam Bo, thank you very much for talking to... I. Don't be, don't be inconsistent in, in how you give editorial control to no. some people and not to others. You can't have some people phone you up ten saying, seconds. take that out and not allow it for others. Nine. Five. Respect. Speak to you soon.
Thank you very much.